Welcome to the Shop Notes podcast, a weekly woodworking podcast brought to you by the staff of Woodsmith. Today on episode 16, we're talking about woodworking inspiration during our time in quarantine. I'm your host, Phil Huber. I'm joined with the usual cast of suspects, John Doyle and Logan Whitmer. So let's get started. This episode of the Shop Notes podcast is brought to you by Woodsmith Plans. You'll find nearly a thousand plans covering everything that you'd want to build. From furniture projects to gift projects, kitchen accessories, workshop projects and jigs, and more. Find your next project at woodsmithplans.com. All right. Don't mind me, I'm just eating Mike and I. Yeah. This. Right. You're eating your feelings through this. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like my time to break my fast. So oh. I just ran upstairs to grab everything I could, which consists of like gummy fruit snacks, a granola bar, and a 1.8 pound bag of Mike and Ike's. Yeah. Right. So, so is that like one uh, serving then? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So your breakfast is at 3 p.m. Yes, unfortunately. Rather than in the morning, like most yep. of us. Yep. Okay. So nice. at this point in your in your journey here, are you still hangry like at two forty five? No, or? no. I never I never have been really. No, oh, okay. It just being at home is harder. Sure. Everything's here. And we've right. both talked about it since we've been doing this yeah. thing. It's like Yeah. Why did I just eat all that? I didn't want it, but I ate it. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. The best part is is like I've been working my way down, so I really only have one meal a day. Sure. It's just all day. It's all day. You just eat yeah. all day. <laughs> mm-hmm. You just continually move through the courses. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> <laughs> it confuses the body that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking mm. of the quarantine, what are we talking about today? Well, here's the idea that I was thinking of for, for the topic is, um, and it's something that I've been kind of missing being in the office is the constant interaction that I have with other woodworkers, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's you guys or going across the street to talk to Mark and Steve and Dylan and Chris in the shop or something. Uh, so I was wondering about what are we doing for uh, woodworking inspiration uh, or learning maybe during this time? Like what's keeping you jacked up about the topic? Cause I know, mm-hmm. well, Maybe I don't know, but for me anyway, like the first week of working from home, it was all about, hey, I got to figure out how to use Microsoft Teams and conference calls are awkward. And Mm -hmm. does my software really work through the VPN? And how come I think that, you know, if I were doing this in Morse code, it would be way faster. Mm -hmm. Or do I have to wear pants anymore? Or (laughs) do I need to shower or wear deodorant or, you know, it's just, it's a new, new rules for new society. Yeah. Right, and you check your uh, you check your meetings, and it's like, okay, no meetings today. I can wear the exact same thing I wore yesterday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, anyway, so I'm going to start for uh, the inspiration part is, and this probably shows that I'm the old one on the, out of the three of us here. But for me, I've been turning to a lot of my woodworking books that I have, mm-hmm. just being able to. And I think it is because working from home, like I had that opportunity to just kind of wander over to my my bee shop in the basement and browse through what, what I have for the selection. So um, we'll call this section of the podcast the book corner because I'm just, okay. just going to share a couple of, couple of books that I have that I think have been really fun for me the last uh, couple of years, but then also uh, – I don't know, shape kind of the, who the who I am as a woodworker now. So the first one is called Spoon mm. by a guy named Barn the Spoon, <laughs> okay. appropriately. Mm. Uh, he's a British guy uh, who uh, was a traveling spoon maker for a while. Uh, his name, mm. full name is Barnaby Carter. Mm. Good work uh, if you can get into this, it. Right. <laughs> So um, he wrote a book, uh, and it's pretty well photographed. It's nice paper. We'll put a link to it on the show notes page, but it's really fun, just the the style. So I've tried to pick up, because this past year for Christmas, I made a bunch of spoons, and we've talked about that before. Uh, But I've 
kind of in, been influenced by his style and spoon forms and carving techniques. So uh, that's been pretty cool for me. Uh, another one with a shameless plug to another woodworking pop, uh, publication is the How and Why of Woodworking by uh, the creative director over at Fine Woodworking, Mike Pekovich. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, I've really appreciated Mike's video work and the articles that he's done for that magazine and his personal sense of style, which is a refined, quieter arts and crafts look. Um, I like his construction techniques and methods. It's kind of fun, um, kind of fun to see. So, and it's it, kind of inspirational too on just seeing different ways of how people approach the task of building similar projects to like what I would, what I like to do. So, um, and then two more just to finish out here. And this goes back to my, uh, my shop notes days. There's a guy who wrote a bunch of articles for uh, Wooden Boat magazine. His name's Harry Bryan. He did one uh, making hand tools. And this is a pretty sweet, it's pretty small. Uh, Wooden Boat publishes it. Again, we'll put a link to it. But it's pretty fun. He has uh, building a couple of planes and a compass, bevel gauge. He makes a big... Uh, herring chisel like a big slick a boat builder slick out of a hand plane blade and a long piece of wood so that's kind of fun to see how he did that uh, i did a class a few years ago um, and one of the students in the class made me one of the compasses from that book so it's just a piece of steel mm -hmm. and then a piece of wood with kind of a bridle joint in it and a small carriage bolt and then uses a kind of like a pump plumbing oh yeah tubing clamp on mm -hmm. there to hold the pencil in place and dang it if this compass isn't super cool to use and really handy so i really like that one and then the the other one um is uh art of cabinet making fine art of cabinet making by his royal highness james krenoff <laughs> so uh i've been of different opinions about mr krenoff over the years and i've really come to appreciate uh, his focus on details, he probably gets a little bit nerdier than I, than I care to, but it's, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's fun sometimes to get pushed a little bit. So, yeah. and maybe that's what I'm missing from being around all you guys is like, we all are so different in how we do things. I didn't think that's what you're going to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that it's kind of, you know, being exposed to that, helps you become a little bit better of a woodworker just because it's like, oh, well, it works for him. So I guess that's legit. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. Yep. Okay. Uh, I was going to say uh, what, what I think is kind of motivated me and driven me a little bit during this time is that I'm not used to working in my home shop. I'm used to working, you know, at work where we have, you know, several shops between the video studio and the magazine production shop and the photo studio. So we have all the tools and we have all the materials and, and, and whatnot. So I think scarcity has kind of driven uh, me to be a little bit more motivated as far as what, what tools do I have here that I can make something with or, or what wood do I have? So I've been like digging up in the, in the top of my garage and finding, you know, scraps of wood that have been sitting up there for 10 years or, or whatnot, and, or taking apart other things that I've started to use um, the wood from. So it's, it's kind of been kind of fun just to be creative from from that perspective as far as um, just what exactly can, can I get done here without going out to get something or running to the shop to uh, at work to, to get tools or, or whatnot. So that's one thing. And then um, just some of the uh, creative ideas or projects that I've had um, that just, I never had time to do or, or projects around the house or little things here and there. That's like, I've always had the idea to do it, but never really had the time because we're always, you know, busy chasing kids activities and, and whatnot. So it's kind of like just being stuck here and, and with nothing to do. And so you can finally get back to, to those things that, that you've always wanted to, to kind of tinker around with. So, so, the, so those are some of the things that kind of 
have sparked, re-sparked my woodworking interests, I guess. So, but, and I don't have, I'm not as literate, literate as, as Phil and I don't have as many books. So I've been using the woodworking <laughs> internet rather than the woodworking <laughs> books. So I don't know what I'd do without that. <laughs> well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, it's, so there's one book I've been reading. Uh, it is not in here. It may or not be maybe in my bathroom. I'm not sure. <laughs> it is, uh, it is the, uh, the, uh, with the grain from Lost Art Press, uh, by Chris Bexvert. Oh yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting because he, it's more, it's not necessarily a book on woodworking, but more a book on the materials itself. Right. Um, and sure. it's, it's a super interesting read. Uh, and it's more about understanding how wood grows, how it moves, how it reacts to stuff you do to it, uh, which is something that I would like to, um, learn a little bit more about because, uh, you know, you guys know I I bought a sawmill, so it's on its way here. Hopefully, it'll be here next week. Um, so, drying, sawing, and drying lumber is something I want to uh, start doing on a regular basis. Uh, so, uh, that is what led me to um, the with the grain book, because uh, everyone says that that is the uh, basically the uh, the book to read to to get a deeper understanding on it. Um, and on that note, some of the other stuff I've been doing uh, hasn't necessarily been for woodworking directly or uh, stuff I've been you know, entertaining myself with hasn't necessarily been for woodworking uh, directly, um, but I've been watching and reading a lot on the, I've been doing a lot of uh, forum surfing, right? Oh yeah. Uh, on the forestry forums, uh, the sawmill forums oh, okay. and stuff. and. Uh, seeing how people handle logs and, and get logs to their house. Um, I have steel here for a, uh, a log arch for my car trailer. Um, so there's been a lot of, you know, peripheral woodworking, you know, stuff that's kind of on the outside of, of the woodworking space, but still related uh, because it's all right. has to do with the material. Um, I was all, I've also been uh, watching a lot, you know, last week I talked about um, how I cut up pieces to start a, a miter plane um right i've been watching a lot of uh, uh bill carter is is uh a, a plane maker out of the uk uh live one of his little wooden planes uh it's beautiful um he also makes these little metal miter planes which is what i'm styling this one after and he has a full uh video series it's like 34 videos on making right. a miter plane and it's hilarious because bill bless his heart is like a what 82 83 year old guy might even be older than that um that just he has a, a garden shed it's literally like a 12 by 12 garden shed in the back of his flat in the middle of the uk yeah. and he's making these hand planes and they're like world-class hand planes and his wife is filming it sarah's filming it on uh like her smartphone mm -hmm. and it's just it's fantastic i mean it is like as pure of content as you can get uh, so I've been annoying everybody in my family, meaning my wife. My kids don't really care, um, but I've been annoying my wife because I've been watching it. Like, as I'm cooking dinner, it'll be on the TV, and I'll just be kind of stealing glances at it, listening to Bill ramble on about why he chooses this file versus another file and, you know, how to yeah. cut perfect dovetails in, you know, brass pieces that are three sixteenths of an inch thick and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of videos, a lot of forum searching. Um, I'm trying not Bill's to Bill's got a great for... personality too. He does. He's cause he's kind of like, you know what, this is how I do it. I don't really care how other people do it. This is how I do it. And this is how it works for me. Yeah. So, and what I like about him is his, I mean, I know he's got a bunch of tools, but it's a pretty minimal kit. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, for sure. It's a hacksaw and a machinist vice that is on a stand in his in his shed, or or it's clamped to a sawhorse that looks like it's as old as he is out in the exactly. backyard or something yeah. like that. Well, and it's funny because you know, he, like you say, he doesn't have a lot of tools, but man, he buys and sells a lot of tools. Right. Which is which is also really fun. Uh, I mean, that's obviously something I love too. Uh, but 
he'll one of his videos he's like yeah oh this miter plane i bought five different times you know he's like i bought this one sold it to somebody and then they died and i bought it back from their widow and you know it's just like what the heck and these are like Mm. thousands of dollars of miter planes you know english miter planes a couple thousand dollars and he just has literally all over his mantle in his house on his bookcase or sitting on the buffet in the dining room it's like that's awesome oh my gosh that's my that's what I want to be when I'm 85 years old. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that he's basically like you in uh, in the DeLorean 50 years from yes. now. Oh, uh, I thing. think he's he has a nicer personality than I do, I believe. So <laughs> there's time. Maybe he was like you when you when me. Yeah, when me. they were this age. So maybe just the softening of the years, <laughs> <laughs> the erosion of the rough spots. Yes. Yeah. Uh, funny, but yeah, so, so I've been doing, I mean, other than just working in general, you know, I think this, it's funny because, you know, browsing Facebook and stuff, everybody's stuck in their shops. I mean, not mm-hmm. stuck in their shops. Everybody's stuck at home. Right. Everybody's like, well, screw it. I'm going to go to my shop. And it's like, yeah, yeah heck yeah. You, you go to your shop, and make something. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's like, Oh, uh, two weeks ago, everyone was posting pictures of their lumber yard halls. Cause it's like, Hey, <laughs> I'm home for the next four weeks. I gotta go stop. Uh, right. Yeah. I saw one guy had like 500 board feet of purple heart in his truck. I'm like, what? Wow. Are you, what are you gonna do with that much like, purple heart? But okay, you know, build a boat, stuff. I guess. But yeah, purple heart boat. That'd be heavy. You can't use it as toilet paper. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Telling you from experience. <laughs> it's the staining. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, that's because one thing that I've noticed, too, is like we did all the stock up for groceries and things like that. But, yeah, for sure. You know, and I have a good amount of wood here. But as I was telling you guys on text the other day, I just I have a smatter, a small smattering of different things that's not really big enough to be much on its own. Yeah. Unless mm-hmm. it's like, hey, guess what? We've all had we're all getting tiny little boxes this year mm-hmm. for Christmas. So. Yep. That's probably my one regret is not having picked up a little bit more wood for <laughs> stuff. But yeah, which it might come down to that anyways. Who knows? Right. I might end up making right. little boxes. <laughs> yeah. Let's say I have, I'm, I have material. Uh, I have to finish this poker table, um, but I have material. I have a pile of scraps sitting next to me, uh, but I have, I have some big slabs still in my storage garage, and I don't really want to break into those yet. But it might come down to it. Sure. Otherwise, I did just cut down a bunch of trees in my backyard. There's a bunch of walnuts See? laying down back there. They're not real. They're only about yay big. So maybe a lot of spoons and bowls and cups. There you go. Yeah. Wood planes. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see the uh, the projects that come out of this quarantine from everybody. If they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, <laughs> the, long, the longer this goes, or well, and a little bit more random, too, because now I yeah. start looking around at all the little pieces that I have. And I'm like, if I combine this with that, with mm. this triangle-shaped piece of CDX plywood that I have, I could totally make this. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember. Sarah, uh, my wife was asking me to make something little the other day. And I was like, I don't. She's like, just out of scrap wood. I was like, I don't have any scrap wood. I don't have any wood that I can spare right now. We're on, <laughs> we're on rationing. This is full ration here. I can't spare right. any We're tight wood. rations. Yeah. yeah, not even like anything like this little. I can't spare this. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> so. uh, that's funny. Which, side note, you guys seen the uh, the hemp wood on the forums no. at all? No. No. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of people posting about it. Yeah, I guess this. I guess hemp wood's the new thing. It's like. Mm. It's it looks like OSB basically, but it's hemp wood. Supposedly, it's super hard. It must it ha- must have some sort of glue or resin mm-hmm. so in it. Is it just sticky, made out of sticky stalks? Icky? Yeah, hemp yeah. stalks. Then yeah, I think so. Yeah, really. It's like it's like using? a compressed fiber, almost. What are people using it for? Uh, I've seen it on the turning groups mostly. Oh, um, oh okay. They're not using it in their smokers. I don't think they. I don't think they're using it. <laughs> Maybe they are. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, a lot. It's all yeah. kinds of uses. Every, everybody, yeah. yeah, everybody's trying stuff in this quarantine. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so what do you guys got working on? I am uh, still chopping up miter plane parts. I, I ordered a new uh, router bit. I didn't have a router bit. The longest flush trim bit I could find is two inches. That seems about the yeah. top, unless so, you start getting in a big diameter. So I ordered these two, right? So that guy, it's a big old pattern bit, three quarters of an inch. Uh -huh. Then I have a uh, two inch flush trim bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Oh, they both have the same cutting length uh, for people that are watching. That's what they look like. Um, the problem is on this guy, the uh, the base for this pork table, it is uh, it's made of three layers of eight quarter walnut. So I profiled the inside layer to where it's smooth, and then every time I add a layer, I just flush trim it. Oh, okay. I didn't think about it real well, and. Some of the inside layer needs trimmed to one of the outside layers. It just I just didn't plan out very well. So I'm wondering like how little I can hold on to the shank with the collet. Oh, I'm playing that game. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, and I think I can get it to where I get this guy cutting where I can just get the bearing on there and get it to work. I don't know. We're gonna mm -hmm. try. Yeah. All right. And, and if it, we all clap our hands and believe yes, you can do it, then it will happen. <laughs> if, if not, I grabbed, we had a uh, what, Stanley number 20 circular plane or compass plane in the, or 220, whatever it is, uh, in the shop. And uh, I grabbed that and it is living on my workbench right now. And if I need to, I will power through it. There you go. So now for the people who aren't watching this on YouTube, give us a rundown of the difference between a pattern bit and a flush trim bit. Um, I always get these backwards. Uh, one has the bearing on top, one has the bearing on the bottom. So the, the, well, but what's the top and what's the bottom? That's the question. Depends how you right. hold it. So the one you're holding right now where the bearing is on the shank end yep. is what in Woodsmith land, we've always called a pattern bit. Yes, yes. However, you can use this to flush trim stuff too why Correct. i don't yes. like the nomenclature because mm -hmm. this also could be a pattern bit if it is in a router table and the right. pattern's on top right. right so we call that one the flush, flush trim, trim bit where the where the bearing is on the tip mm -hmm. tomato tomato right yeah uh, but does anybody really say tomato no, no. Oh, okay they say so what do you call oh. <laughs> what do you call one that has a bearing on both sides uh, double bearing flush trim bit. Or is it a double bearing pattern bit? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So, regardless, I think there is a market for somebody to make a six inch long one of these. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening infinity tools. Yeah. Casey, I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah. I'm great. pretty sure there I wouldn't want to start that out. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really good for deep mortises too. <laughs> it would. <laughs> uh, tail shaped mortises, where you get yes. way down at the, the bottom, you get the much wider. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. All right, so I have a couple of projects that I've been working on. Still working on finishing up the nightstand project, but um, going back to every piece of scrap has a purpose. I. Um, we were going to do this as a video, and I think we still are for uh, uh, woodworking essentials, but I was flipping through an old issue of Shop Notes. Mm -hmm. Shop Notes number 69, the, uh, the May 2003 issue, and I'm going to build the uh, scroll bending jig. Ooh, yeah, nice. My dad made one of these, and... I realize this is not one of those things where I'm going to use it every day, but I thought being able to do some metal bending would be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be something that the, uh, my kids would enjoy too, you know, like taking just some basic bar stock and turning it into shelf brackets or yeah. mm -hmm. planter brackets or something like that. So it just would be, and it's kind of fun to see, something like just straight bar stock get transformed into something else and something that was pretty simple. So, yeah. So do you think before that scroll bending jig was invented, um, people rolled their scrolls by hand? Yes. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you just kind of... Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And then the other thing is, since we're working from home, is I was trying to figure out a way to organize my space a little bit better. So for our our bowl, ongoing bowl project that we're doing, I'm not doing a bowl per se, but I'm doing a... Uh, this is my inspiration shot for those of you who can see this. It's a desk organizer that kind of sits mm -hmm. in between the monitor and the keyboard and has some pockets for like sticky notes and your phone, uh, pens and pencils and things like that. Some of the stuff that I use every day and I'm going to make it out of uh, a piece of walnut that I got from Logan. Nice. It's about two inches thick, about four and a half ish, just under four and a half wide, 20 inches long. And I'm going to do some, do some carving on it to make those recesses. So rather than have it like this really clean industrial router look to it, I'm going to go with uh, carving gouges and oh. textured edges and kind of a sculpted bottom on it. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. We're looking at you, turn. John, but oh, you, yeah, you can't, you can't I have to. I have to work on something? Yeah. No, right. I'm, I'm sitting here in my garage. And across from me, if you guys remember, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, probably a year or two ago, I made a prototype trebuchet yeah. that, sat, that sat down in the video studio for I don't know how long. And then it got moved to my house when we moved the video studio last summer. And so it's been sitting here. I think it was buried under some boxes for a while. And now it's all out in the open for me to look at. And it's like, maybe I should finish that and... It could probably be a uh, STEM project for like my kids or whatever, since they're out of school. Yeah. Maybe we, maybe they should help, and and we should go. finish that, and you know, do some physics with it, and maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, It'd be fun. So, maybe attack a castle or something. I don't know yeah. what people are doing now. I don't know what the world's like out there. Yeah, right. So something's gotta be, something probably needs to be attacked. You gotta, yeah, you gotta start sieging. You know. Uh, right. Sam, Sam's Club for toilet yep. paper. So. For schools. I mean, yeah. there's nothing going on in the schools. Right. So Which you got to be ready. Got to be ready. Yeah. Well, you got to start launching. I mean, think of all the basketballs and soccer balls and footballs that aren't getting thrown onto roofs of schools right now. Yeah. Yep. You, know, you got to fill the gap. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Somebody's got to step which, up. What are your guys' toilet paper count roll, roll counts down to in your house? Uh, we're still in pretty good shape. We... We didn't go all prepper on it, but me neither. Um, we're at seventeen. It, okay. it, I think we're still sitting pretty. Uh, it was funny because um, we were leaving on vacation, kind of when this, right before all this hit, and people were starting to buy toilet paper up, and it was like, haha, yeah. Why is everybody buying toilet paper? Like we're never <laughs> going to run out of toilet paper. And then by the time we got back from vacation, we had run, you know, everybody had run out of toilet paper. But <laughs> as we were shopping. Um, before, you know, we'd left, I was like, okay, well, if everybody else is buying toilet paper, I'll buy some, you know, I don't know what this is all about. So we still have not cracked into that toilet paper yet. Oh. We're, just, we're just right there. Right. Yeah, right Coming there. to the Doyle's you know, house. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, we have toilet paper now. And yep. oh, you also know that we have a trebuchet. So you've been warned. <laughs> you've been warned. Don't so get within a hundred feet. Right. A word to the wise. Yeah. Uh, so funny. But. All right, so we actually just finished our first quarantine issue of the magazine, too, mm -hmm. which was a, an interesting experience, I would say. It scares me that you say the first quarantine issue. Yeah. You're assuming there's <laughs> going to be others? Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up. <laughs> uh, which, honestly, it went a lot smoother than I was expecting. Right. You know, I mean, we are set up really well to work from home, work for remotely. Yep. Uh, a lot of our company does it on a regular basis. Uh, but uh, it went it went surprisingly well. And I have to give props to our entire team that made it work because yeah. it worked. Yeah. You know, one thing about our process uh, probably since the dawn of time was we have uh, – for those who don't know about our process, we write the articles and projects all in-house, and then we circulate them among 
the editorial staff and art staff and designers for comments and corrections. And up until this issue, we've done it all the old fashioned way where we print off pages, put them in manila folders, send them around and everybody has a different color pen. So we know who the comments are from and we start uh, marking, physically marking up sets of pages. So the opposing pages in an issue we call spreads and uh, that goes around and then people make corrections and then we do it a second and sometimes a third time around. And this time we just couldn't do that. So we were doing it all digitally. And um, I'd have to say that I always thought that I just kind of had to print it out so that I could see it better because that's just how I read. But I don't know, it's about halfway through the issue where I really started to think, you know, like this is a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We throw a lot of paper away. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, even even beyond just the the efficiency of it mm -hmm. in terms of paper usage, yeah, um, it just seemed like it was a nicer process to be able to, like with the PDFs, you can still highlight and make comments and yeah. circle mm -hmm. things and it's all there, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny through this process how we're all kind of learning of like, oh, we could have done it this way, or we had this, you know, we could have done this from home before, or yeah, it's like right. we're all kind of learning more technology, kind of being forced into it than if if we hadn't gone through this. And it's funny, too, I'm going to call out my wife. She's a, a teacher, and she's had to do online education with her students. And the other day, she's like, and we don't have a printer at home, and she's like, can you just run into work and print something off for me? for school and I was like what do you need it printed for you're doing all like digital online learning and as she's like can you go print it off so then I can scan it and upload it for the students and I was like just print it as a pdf <laughs> <laughs> and upload it and she's like oh yeah oh yeah it's like we don't need the paper let's skip out the middleman here and so we're all she's kind of learning the, you know all this zoom and chat meetings and online stuff too so it's kind of interesting of of the technology that's been out there that we just have always done it our old way because that's what we're used to so yeah yeah i will say that sometimes i feel like uh in-person meetings and collaboration i think is a little bit easier than on uh, because mm -hmm. there's too many times when we've done staff meetings where it's like no 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 go ahead no <laughs> go yeah. ahead and usually we're sitting there in a, a video conference and it's like, I'm seeing everybody else's face and then my face. And it's like, is that what my face looks like in meetings? Is that what everybody else is seeing? And is that why everybody's so passive aggressive to me? Right. It's like, I got to look in the mirror as I'm in right. meetings. It's, it's very distracting. I got to change well, my meeting uh, face. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're right. Because there is this little weird flag. So it's like everybody's trying to start talking and then everybody's voice comes through at once. It's like, oh. Yeah, stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so, but anyway, I think it's been going pretty well. And um, on the plus side, um, and I do miss being in the video studio and having that mm -hmm. part of our yeah. work where we're kind of setting that aside for now. But mm -hmm. on the plus side, we've been able to add a bunch more content to woodsmith.com, mm -hmm. uh, getting some more articles up there. Um, doing some more personal articles like blog posts and things like that, where we can kind of keep in touch with each other and stay connected with readers as to what exactly we're doing. And, you know, maybe how woodworking changes from when you're in a magazine shop setting compared to uh, being in your home shop and what you're just capable of, of doing and how that sometimes changes things too. Yeah, absolutely. So I think this wraps up today's episode of the Shop Notes podcast. Once again, if you're listening to this as an audio podcast and you want to see some of the things that we're talking about, you can watch the paint dry, so to speak, during these podcasts and check it out over on our YouTube channel. Um, also, we'd love to hear from you, something that you enjoyed or maybe didn't on the podcast. Uh, you can contact us at the email address, uh, woodsmith at woodsmith.com. You can also check out the show notes for this particular episode, again, at woodsmith.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode, for whatever platform you're listening from, 
please give us the thumbs up or a five-star rating and put in a comment there so that uh, we can get this podcast out to more woodworkers just like you. So enjoy yourself, stay well, everybody, and we'll see you next week. This episode of the Shop Notes podcast is brought to you by Woodsmith Magazine. Woodsmith Magazine has been the trusted source for all your woodworking information for over 40 years. From tips and techniques to furniture projects to shop projects, you'll find it all at Woodsmith Magazine. Subscribe today at woodsmith.com. When you're on a conference call with people and they're not too familiar with the technology and they're trying to do something a little bit more advanced and all you see them is like, mm, like yep. <laughs> yeah.